Okay. Good, good, good. Microphone's on. Check, check. Switching over to live. So I hope you like the little intro. It's still working on, working on getting things set up. And that's why I created that intro because every single time I go live, including today, there's always some sort of difficulty going on. And today's difficulty is my second camera is not working. I don't know why. So I'm not gonna be able to give you the close up of what I'm doing over here, but you can see it from the distance and you should be fine to see that. And hello everybody and welcome to my channel, Happy Healthy Wife, or as I like to really call it, How to Make Your Wife Happy and Healthy. Welcome and we, yes, will be making some nice little summer treats. It's kind of hot now, at least where I'm living. And, you know, I've been tending to sweat a little bit in the kitchen, so some nice, cool, refreshing treats will be wonderful, wonderful. So, before we get started though, one thing I wanted to mention, it's a side note, 100% side note. Today, aha, uh because -huh. on Pi Day earlier this year, we went and I went and got a pie from a place called Sprouts. Maybe you've heard of a, it's like a grocery store chain in my area, Sprouts, kind of like a Trader Joe's, you have Trader Joe's near you, one of those um, fancy type places. And I got a pie from there, and it just was not good at all. It was a blueberry pie, double crusted. So one thing I have found that you don't want to get pie, but pie from a little grocery store. Instead, what we did today, you can see we got a wonderful summer treat, which is a strawberry pie. This is definitely a summer treat because we can't get this in any time. But summer, because Polly's Pie is the restaurant we went to. If you have a Marie Callers or Polly's Pie, there's some kind of pie restaurant near you. Yeah, those are the pies you want. You do not want to get a grocery store pie. They're just not good. I'm glad actually nobody even tried that pie until I got it home, but it just wasn't good. So anyway, yes, want to have a little pie. But so that's another summer treat, something that we can't get the entire year. It's only during the summer that Polly's Pies makes their fresh strawberry pie. Think of that. All right, but today, what did I say? We are doing summer treats. So the first thing I'm going to start off with is lemonade. I don't know how many lemons it's going to cause me to do. We'll just get out a few lemons. How about eight of them? Lemonades. So now, when you make lemonade, there are many ways to make lemonade. One of the best ways is to start by making the syrup. And that's really what you want. You want the syrup. And if you might see, I do have a video. Maybe you might see it. I do have a video on lemonade, except what did I make? I made honey lemonade. Oh, we were not pleased with honey lemonade. So we're doing the best version of lemonade possible with plain white sugar, sugar and water. That's going to become our simple syrup. We're going to make a cup of this syrup. We're going to juice the lemons because we want this to kind of cool. I don't know if you've ever worked with glass pitchers before. I'm about to use a glass pitcher. But if you work with a glass pitcher, one like this, what you're going to have happen is if it's hot, 
and you instantly put something cold in here, it's gonna crack. I have seen it happen many times. So we are gonna make sure to not do that and try and get the water a little cooler. So this is a kind of a small pitcher, you know. It's not gonna hold all eight cups that I'd usually do. But we're just gonna do one cup of sugar to one cup of lemon juice. So that's generally the standard, or you might do three-fourths cup, maybe you like your lemonade a little more tart, you can do that too. But we're gonna get out, see if I need a cup of sugar and a cup of water, that's gonna make about two cups when it's all dissolved together. Because volume, well, volume will be about the same, not fully. So let's get out a two cup measurement system. And a one cup measurement system. Uh, so we're getting on both. Two cup for the syrup. That's gonna probably fill that thing, isn't it? One cup for the regular. Now I'm thinking that pitcher is gonna be kind of small for our lemonade. But uh, I don't know. I'll have to, we'll figure something out. A cup of sugar, maybe a little less. Cup. Oop. While I'm in here, Got my lemon juicer, not that one, uh, this one. I have a few different versions of lemon juicers. I do not really have an electric one right now. If I made lemonade all the time, I'd probably invest in one of those electric lemon juicers, but we don't need that. So yeah, so this is my beautiful lemon juicer. It looks really nice. All right, so if you do not have hot water at your disposal, like I do, a cup? Wow, it's a lot. We're going to do a little less to start. And if you find that it's too tart, you can add more sugar. The reason why we're doing the sugar first, though, is because we want to dissolve the sugar. We want to dissolve. We don't want little sugar crystals sitting at the bottom of your lemonade jar. All right, so that was about three-fourths a cup of sugar. Mm, maybe a little more than that. little more yeah you may, if you're not if you're not if you are surprised this is actually what they do for lemonade oh, that's a whole cup do want a whole cup let's go a little less again okay shake it down okay that's okay about halfway between close enough so what I'm going to do, oh, you can see it over here next to my mouse, next to my laptop. And this is our always hot water heater. So this hot water is at 176 degrees Fahrenheit. That is really hot. So this is going to use this to dissolve the sugar. So you don't have any sugar crystals when you're making the tea. Unlock button. So about a cup. So this one actually contains four liters worth of water. Four liters worth, okay. So you can see the hot water and the sugar are mixing. Let's see, use my thin long spoon. So we wanna mix it up, make a simple syrup, simple syrup. Hot so that the sugar can dissolve. Now, if you don't have an always hot water heater, you can always just uh, boil the water on the stove. That'll work too. And we're just gonna stir all the sugar together in the water until we don't see any more cloudy sugar. In fact, it does look a lot like a syrup now. And it is really sweet. This is also where you can make hummingbird juice, which we have stopped doing, but you could. So I'm gonna keep this over here, away from this pitcher, because I want this to kind of relax and cool down while I get my one cup of lemon juice going. 
one cup of those. I need a knife and I need a place to cut it on. And a knife. Take out my best knife. Now, I was going to use a straight edge knife, but this knife is my best knife. So let's just use it. All right, lemons are nice and cold. Got one and a half, and just start juicing. Try and get a cup of lemon juice. We'll see how many lemons. Now, used to be, we would just take the lemons off of grandma's tree. My grandma had a tree. And later my mom got a lemon tree. Lots of good lemons there. Just go out in the backyard, pick off the lemons. And we also have a lemon tree in our backyard, but it has produced zero lemons for us so far. Even though it's been there about, oh, I don't know, 10 years or so. It looks like it was kind of unhealthy for a lot of the time though. So we are hoping that it has gotten healthy. It's grown better, it's grown bigger, but still has yet to blossom. But we're not completely discouraged because we had another tree, another citrus tree, a mandarin orange citrus tree. And that citrus tree, well, it was uh, not producing any oranges at all. So that one lemon, hmm, a less than a quarter. Wasn't producing mandarin oranges at all. Not a single one. Barren for many years. And finally, two years ago. Mm, smells very tart. Mm. Two years ago, it started producing flowers and then producing mandarins for us. Mandarin oranges. So there is hope yet for the lemon tree. We are hoping it'll grow out. I kind of wonder if uh, when we first moved in, we had some painters paint the house. And I think that was the area where the lemon tree is being planted. It might have been the area where they dumped some of their excess paint or excess chemicals. So that might have been partly why our lemon tree hasn't been doing well. But it's looking like it's growing now. It's growing pretty good. And we'll see if it gets lemons. Now, one thing we do get a ton of, and I have to give them away because we get too many, is limes. We get a lot of limes. Yep. More than I can use. Still have six limes sitting over there on the counter. My main use for limes, well, I mostly use it for um, making a nice pico de gallo, a nice accent. Sometimes I put it onto the fish. Ah, that looks like, let's see, if I do about six, I guess probably gonna take about six lemons, lime, lemons or lemonade. Ooh, mm, yeah, it smells good. Fresh squeeze lemonade. If you don't have a citrus juicer, they're cheap. Pick them up at any store. I really like this one. If you look at it, it's got a hook on this side. It's also got, uh, it catches the pulp for you. So it makes it really easy to juice your lemons. What, the lim lemon squeezer? I know there's actually a video on the lemon squeezer. Think I should use that instead? You want me to try the lemon squeezer? I kind of feel like I should try the lemon squeezer. So you've seen how I've done this lemon juice so far. Now we're up to 150 milliliters. I guess, yeah, I've been showing you the milliliter side, but that's okay. A little over half a cup of pure, good lemon juice. At this point, if you look at my lemon juice thing, it is fairly, 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 these are all going the same thing, doesn't matter. I don't want to, you know, dirty up more spoons. It's all going to the same place eventually. So there's lots of pulp here. All right, so let's see. Let's see. So three of them have gotten more than more than half a cup. 
I'm going to dispense with these things. Okay. So let's compare that now. So I look at this side because it's easier to see. It's 125 milliliters. 125 milliliters. And you're probably wondering, I did have a whole thing on how to use the lemon squeezer. That was three lemons. Let's do three more. Let's see if we can get it to 250. And so what you do, remember I tried three different ways. And the way that I've come to like best, a little more. We cut off a little bit on the bottom. Cut off a lot there. And make sure it just fits right in. Oh, look at that snug fit. And then you just squeeze. Because when I got this lemon squeezer, came with no instructions. I did not know which way I was supposed to squeeze it. Do I squeeze it in this manner so that it fits the form? Do I do it upside down? I've actually heard people breaking their lemon squeezer when they went upside down. Anyway, so then we can compare what they look like, right? All right, well, let's do the next one. Okay, a little long, a little more. So I just wanna get to actual lemon in here. So I don't want pith. Okay, so I can see now there's actually some lemon going on there. I wish I had my other camera to show it to you, but I don't. So we're gonna take it and squeeze all the way down. And you can see, well, let's give you a comparison. So the ones that I've hand done look like this, fairly well drained. The one that I just squeezed, it's like this. You can I see the difference? See milliliters wise. You know, what did I say? I said 125. Well, I did three out of the lemons. To get to 125, I did that lemon. I'm also up to 200. That was 75 milliliters. So 125 divided by 3, I can do math, is about 40, 42-ish milliliters. But with just one with the squeezer, it's about 75 milliliters. So. Maybe there is something to squeeze her. Ooh, that's gonna fit snugly. And let's just squeeze out that juice. Or it could have just been that that was a better lemon. That one had more juice in, in other words. All right, squeeze that one. Well, I must say it does smell very lemony here. If you like the smell of lemons, you would like the smell of my kitchen right now. Ah, there we go. Got it ready to go. And squeeze again. Yeah, that one only did about 50 milliliters. So that was the lesser lemon. We're almost up to one cup. So let's do one more. One more lemon. You know, the one thing that I, did, I will say about this lemon squeezer, it is absolutely Saving my arms. Whereas the 
So yeah, I gotta this in a little more. Whereas that one was a lot of twisting, this is just straight on pushing. And it is saving my arms to use the lemon squeezer. And this one looks like it's gonna be full of juice. So we're just gonna tap out with this one. Get all that juice coming out. Now the truth, if you want to do a real test, I could have did one container with the lemons that I rotated and one with the lemon squeezer. I could have. But I didn't. Just the difference, because you know there might be some pulp difference too. There you go. There's a cup of lemon juice. There's a cup of sweet lemon. Uh, Sweet sugar water. See how hot it is now. Ooh, still really warm. It's warm, it's not completely hot. Okay. All right, we're good, we're good, we're good. Hopefully. We're not gonna break the jar. Lemon juice, because it's not that hot. But you do understand, whenever you're doing glass, if you take the temperature, wow. That's well over 250. So either A, the second lemons were juicier, or B, the lemon squeezer put in more juice, or C, the lemon squeezer didn't filter out any pulp. As you can still see, or you can, there is still some pulp right here in this one. And then these ones, the pulp, if I squeeze it with a lemon squeezer, would be inside there. So yes, that's the lemon squeezer. All right, let's go ahead and get rid of that lemon juice, lemon pulp. All right, now it comes the standard. Well, I was just working on the video, not the video, the website. You know, I have the website happyhealthywife.net. Wonderful website. I do have in that website a wonderful set. Now I'm going back to all my old videos. And I probably should have filtered that again. Oh well, doesn't matter that much. Now I was going back and I'm updating all my videos. So look at that, we did some, it's about two cups of water plus sugar. So I was going back to all my old videos and do, 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 do. Wow. Now it's lemonade concentrate. And I've been putting them up. And the last one I just did today before we go into this live was one on mashed potatoes. Why do I want to mention that? Why is that important? Because in the mashed potato recipe, it's all about tasting what you got. So you do a little, you mash up your potatoes, and there are four ingredients in a, mash, a good mashed potato. Butter, cream or milk, same thing, salt and pepper. And you wanna make those four in a nice combination that you enjoy. So we have a suggested amount, but then it says to taste. And if you watch the video, it's all about grandma's recipe for mashed potatoes. And in her recipe, it's just a matter of, you just taste it. You just keep tasting it and tasting it and tasting it until it gets to the, gets to what you want. All right, so let's move this, we'll leave that again. Do, 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 do. All right, all the extra lemon peels. There we go. Uh, I should probably rinse this board off, actually. Well, I'm gonna rinse it off because that's some sour lemon juice on there. And we're gonna get some sweet, sweet uh, shaved ice pretty soon. First, we gotta get all the ingredients for Okay, we're not done with the lemonade just yet. Uh, how do we get this cooler? Well, let's see, this is still a warm glass. Let me switch and use this glass instead. And start adding water. So now we have a good concentrate. Now you're just gonna to start to dilute it to your desired amount. 
On this water here, this is filtered water. So one thing we do, and we love our filter water, that is a reverse osmosis filter in the bottom there. So what it is, is a big canister of filtered water. So you think about the bottled waters you get, if you see some labels, they'll say how it's been filtered or how they got it. Some is spring water, some of it is reverse osmosis filtered water. So this is that same system they're using on your tap water. We're just using it on our tap water. And we get the same bottle quality water right from a tap. It's great. We use it to make ice, which you're about to see actually. I should bring out some ice for this. Let's see, let me feel this. Okay, it's pretty good. Um, we're gonna cool it down even faster I'm gonna probably use some ice cubes in a bit. Anyway, so I got a couple extra. Oh, that's like one and a half cups extra. So that was two cups. So one, two and a half cups and a cup of lemon. Ooh, this is gonna be pretty, pretty potent, I think. Let's, though, let's get out of glass. Whoops. That's right. Ha. Huh. I wash some cute glasses. You know, part of this is all about making things cute. So I'm gonna try a little. See how it is, see how it ranks on the flavor scale. Add a couple of ice cubes. Cool it down. This is a really small glass, I know that. But it's just a taste test, really. Some lemonade. All right. Just stir a little so the ice will can melt and also dissolve into and also make it nice and uh, cool down. So let's see some lemonade. That's it. We're gonna put that in the refrigerator too. So let's see how it is. Hmm. Ah, that is a nice, refreshing glass of lemonade. And we can do a little bit more. Doesn't need to be so strong. So that was two extra cups. So let's count the cups <clears throat> of water. I added two cups, a third cup. We got a cup of lemon juice. Usually you can, you, know, you can add more cups of water. That is fine to dilute it even more. And we're also doing that by doing this. I'm gonna add a couple ice cubes with that one too. If you wanna add ice cubes directly, cool it off faster. You can do that too. Let's add some ice cubes directly to it. Do, 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 do. Nice cube for you. Two cubes for you. Four. Let's add some more. A couple more cubes of ice. cubes of ice, whoops, to eliminate. One simple reason. One simple reason. It's gonna cool it down faster. Let me put that water aside. Let's see, I'm gonna need this again. And there you have it. 
a fast, quick, and easy lemonade. <laughs> of course, you know what comes next. Picture. Got to set it up for picture. Now we're going to do the lemonade picture now because what happens is, you know, when you do lemonade, or anything that's going to melt, get colder. Because when we're going to bring out, we're going to do the shaved ice next. When you start doing lemonade and the lemonade's done, it's going to be melted by the time we get to the shaved ice. So I want to go ahead and take the picture now. There you go, quick, easy, peasy, lemon squeezy, lemonade. All right, so yes, behind the scenes, this is how we make our thumbnails. Come on. Okay, good. Battery's going a little low on the, uh, I'm going to have to bring it forward for background reasons. But here is, oh, let's, okay, I, I don't like symmetric. Let's do asymmetric. There we go. An asymmetric display of our lemonade. And because you can't see that very well, Oof. we're not doing the dark side. We're going the dark side. We need to have a dark background below it. How do we do that? I have my black table. So yes, yeah, so we're gonna be. You're gonna not see me for a minute. Hopefully, you'll be able to hear me. But I will be making one more picture behind the camera. And I don't know if you can hear it, but one thing you may know or may not know about high quality cameras like this camera, this camera is uh, be a 4K camera. One thing about these cameras, they're super high def, mirrorless as well, is they will heat up. And, but they have a fail safe because they don't want to get too hot. They get too hot, they start baking the brains of the camera and then you won't have a camera to use anymore. So the problem with that is that in the middle of your live stream like today, the camera gonna just all of a sudden decide, I'm done, and turn off on you. So what I have next to my camera is a fan. I have found that the fan actually helps a lot. So I put the fan next to the camera. It's blowing on the camera. It's cooling down the battery compartment so that the camera can stay cool and not turn off on us. And that is one of the other secrets. You didn't bet you know about video in 4K, how difficult it is from time to time. Oh uh, yeah, that's a much better shot for our thumbnail. Light source. There you go. Much more contrasty. Let's take a look. So here you go. I know it's not going to focus in on it very well. There it goes. But you can see a nice contrast with the yellow lemon and the black background. Instead of the yellow and the white, you just couldn't. I just couldn't see anything with that. All right. So there we go. Lemonade. Now we've got our beautiful photo of the lemonade. All right, so let's take another sip. The second one I did. I know because the ice is less melted here. Which would make sense. All right, let's try it. If you ever gone to hot dog on a stick and got their fresh squeezed lemonade, 
This is just like that. It's really good. A little bit of tartness, a lot of sweetness, a little puckering because it's the lemon juices. And now we're just gonna put it in the refrigerator to save it for later. I'm gonna keep those two cups out so I can have some while we're filming here. Yep, yep, yep. Good old lemon juice, lemonade. Move you, I need to take you out, okay. So now it's shaved ice. All right, so for shaved ice though, I'm gonna need to take out a lot of stuff. There are many different things you can put in your shaved ice on your shaved ice, in your shaved ice. Now I'm gonna bring out a whole bunch of different options. Things that you might like, things that you might not care for, things you may have never tried for, things that are only available in Asian stores. <coughs> Lychee. Red bean paste. Now this is not exactly the one that I wanted, condensed milk, but this red bean paste is very good on it. Here we go. What else did I get? So now these I do find in American stores, so this is not so. Come on. You can do it. You can get out of there. Here we go. That one's firmer than. And I probably cut up this one. This one's a little, a little softer. Remember mangoes, strawberries. Oh, we're not done yet. Blueberries. Let's see, what am I missing? Some people might want to put peaches. I know the ingredients I had when I saw, I think it was mangoes and strawberries and lychee and red bean paste and condensed milk when I put online. And there was also glass jelly. Grass, no, grass jelly. I didn't buy any grass jelly. Partly because I couldn't find it. But partly because it's not that important. Let's see what else? Oh, here we go. Another one. A good watermelon. That one's from Costco. So these are some of the things you could put in your, you know, any fruit will do. Any fruit will be nice in your shaved ice. This is the Asian style shaved ice. You know, if you go to a Korean shaved ice place, Taiwanese shaved ice, Chinese shaved ice, Japanese. If you go to one of those places that most of Asia, these are the kinds of ingredients you will see in your shaved ice. Fresh fruit, uh, you might get some canned fruit, canned lychee, some other canned fruit, canned peaches, red bean paste, really sweet red bean paste. Don't, don't be alarmed, this is very sweet. A lot of sugar inside, and it's not the red beans we have in America. It's not the red beans and rice red beans. It's a Japanese red bean, or at least I know it as the Japanese. Azuki, that's what the Japanese call it, azuki beans. But uh, yeah, it's a smaller, darker red bean. So it's not the same red beans as red beans and rice. It's not like kidney beans, it's not like the American red beans. And of course, condensed milk is very popular in the Asian version. I know in some, like maybe the Hawaiian version, you might see somebody do ice cream. Some places in Hawaii add like the extras like these, some of them just do syrups. Which syrup am I gonna choose? Ah, let's choose colorful. Let's go, ooh, I'm low on syrups. Okay, strawberry. Uh, pina colada is no color. Banana. Strawberry, banana, oh, what a, com and cherry. Those are three common ones. And there's also blue raspberry, but there's so little of it. The other thing you can use if you just like shaved ice with syrups, you can buy these easily online through Amazon. Huh, is there a link in the description? There probably is. If you go to my description for this video, there is probably a link to these. But, oh, we'll get to that in a second. So anyway, so these are the ingredients I would put in my shaved ice possibly, keep you cool. So this is like the Hawaiian version. You can, have, you can mix and match, but this is like the Hawaiian just straight syrups, because that's all you get, these straight syrups. You can mix and match the syrups however you like. 
And there's the Asian style. We're using fresh fruit. So let's process some of these fruits so we can put it onto our shaved ice. I'm not going to do them all. And we don't need all the strawberries. For, sh for one shaved ice, I'm only going to do one shaved ice. Oh, I'm sorry, check that. I'm going to do one Asian style shaved ice. And now I'll do one um, Hawaiian style shaved ice. Those are the ways I usually call them. I mean, you can call them other ways, but... So I'm choosing the strawberries that look the best, of course, naturally. These all look pretty good. Okay, these look good. Five strawberries are going to chop up. Now, I might have too much fruit, but can you ever have too much fruit? Let's go ahead and process our strawberries. Now, when you're doing the shaved ice with the multiple ingredients, I'm not sure I'm going to put the watermelon in or not myself, but I have it out there just in case. Then we got my paring knife. Uh, so when you're processing these things, you want them nice and small. I might go for sliced strawberries. Oh, I should just do how I usually do it. There we go. Boom. Kind of dip down. You want to look at it closely. Dip down below. And kind of like a crescent shape. And come back up. Get rid of the middle part. Easy stuff. But when you're doing the fresh fruit version of shaped ice, you probably want to kind of have them chopped up a little small, little chunks. You know, that way it can spread out over the shaved ice and not just be in one small, small area. See, I don't want whole strawberries on my shaved ice, though. So we are going to go for sliced in half. Should I quarter them? Looking at them, yeah, we're going to quarter the strawberries. Quarter the strawberries and then more slices. All right, we'll get out the big knife for the bigger slices. Bigger slices, well not bigger slices, but more of the strawberry slice. Boom, and boom. You know, just a nice sliced strawberries. Like you do on a waffle. Oh, fresh strawberries on a waffle. Oh, that sounds good right about now too. Right about now, that sounds really good. Good summer treat. Oh yes, those are some very sweet tasting strawberries. Now, if you're disappointed with your strawberries, they're not very sweet. You know what my mom usually does when they're not sweet? And just mix them with sugar. But you won't need to do that for this dish because sweetened condensed milk, this is like just adding sugar to your shaved ice. This red bean paste, all right, let me tell you the ingredients. In order. Sugar, water, red beans. So this is like the lemonade, but with thicker in its red beans. I've cooked that kind of red bean paste before. And it is basically that. You take the, sh uh, the water and sugar, and you add some red beans, and you cook it until the red beans are nice and soft. Oh, you a big knife all the way on that one. Okay. Mm. These strawberries, yes, this is... Oh, I can already. And, oh, think about it this way. Too. This is also, if I just did red and blue, red and blue and add the white, and maybe add this red and this white, and not do the yellow, you could have a nice American colored dessert shaved ice. Yeah, as you saw, I purposefully, because one thing I noticed, I'll let you know some of the back workings of the, the YouTubing, in case you're interested, in case you want to YouTube yourself. So I noticed last year, well, I didn't notice it last year. I noticed, I was looking through my videos and seeing which ones are doing well, which ones aren't doing well, as always. And I noticed a little spike in late June, 
early July for my patriotic jello recipe. I'm like, huh, that's interesting. But you know, I wasn't really satisfied with that video so much because I learned more about how to make the patriotic jello, how to make that white layer, which is the best thing ever. And truthfully, it is really the best thing ever. So if you want to look up that recipe and have that for your 4th of July next year, or maybe you want to do it for Labor Day, a patriotic Labor Day recipe, oh, it is one of the best desserts I make. It is, it's just jello. It doesn't take long. Um, the, I, I should, wait, let me put it, it, it doesn't take much time in the kitchen. That's the word I'm looking for. It does take a while to cook because you're doing three layers of jello. You do one layer, takes about, you know, 10, 15 minutes, maybe less. You just heat up water, add raspberries, put it in the, put it in the uh, dish. So you have that. Mm, you don't need a place for these. No, I'm just gonna leave it on the board. Okay, so there's some nice red. So the red layer is actually raspberries. Now you can substitute strawberries if you want a sweeter base, but it's all raspberry jello. Bottom layer is raspberries. Using raspberry jello. So that's a nice red layer. Once you've done that, 10, 15 minutes, good. Now you start the second layer, which is a cream layer. It's the white layer. It's half and half. It's sour cream. Oops. Don't have strawberries. We'll put them back. It's sugar. It's vanilla. So it's a very tasty vanilla. So you ever had raspberries and vanilla? Oh, just think about raspberries with a vanilla cream. And a very easy one to make. It's very good. And that didn't stop there because the third layer is blue. And I know I'm using a, again, we're using the raspberry jello because it's just better flavored than the other jellos. Yeah, we're gonna use this to wash the blueberries. A cup of blueberries. Do, 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 do. So you put the blueberries on that layer to make it blue. Oh, so like you, you cook the white layer, you let the red layer cool in the refrigerator, and you let the white layer cool outside so it's cool enough that it won't melt the layer. Because if they're too hot, if you just cook that white layer and put it straight onto your red layer, it's gonna melt it. And you're just gonna have a big swirled mess of white and red. Don't do that. So yeah, so you wait until you know, the red layer is gelled, and then you add the white layer on top. And while the white layer is cooling, you can cook the third layer, the blue layer, blueberries, and yes, raspberry jello again, because the raspberry jello, in our opinion, tastes better. I mean, you could substitute it for a blue colored jello, but we really, really, really enjoyed the blueberries inside. Using, and we used fresh blueberries. The very first time I made the dish, it was red raspberries that were frozen. And blue berries that were um, from a can. But I haven't found canned blueberries in the store anymore. I mean, you can still do frozen blueberries, but canned blueberries. And the one thing about those canned blueberries was that they came with the juice. And you would use the juice to color the layer blue. Does that mean it more blue? All right, let's see. So we sell the lychee. And so these two layers, that's a cut and open. We've got to process the mango layer, the mangoes. So anyway, so the red, white, and blue gel, it, I noticed it had gotten a lot more views than I had expected. This one's a little softer. A lot more views than I expected. And so I redid it because I learned over the course of working with it, there's some mistakes you can make. Biggest mistake on the jello you can make is to make the white layer chalky. It just kind of detracts from the oh, beautiful creaminess it's supposed to be. And so the chalky layer was bad. So we learned, I learned what makes it chalky. What made it chalky was letting the white layer boil at any point. You don't want it to boil. I like a vigorous boil, not a small boil. Oh, if you don't know how to cut mangoes, there's a huge seed right in the middle, right here. So actually all those um, pitted fruits like 
peaches, nectarines, plums, they all have like a seed in the middle, but mangoes have a huge seed in the middle. So if I tried to cut it this way, you're just gonna hit that seed and not go any farther. And it goes out really far. And you'll see that in a second. And I'm gonna cut off the other side. There we go. So there we go. I was able to cut the mango. That's, if you never cut a mango before, that's usually your first step. So the middle part, and this is usually the, um, the chef's part. Okay, you're probably right. I probably shouldn't be using that big old hunk of knife to peel my mango inside. We'll use a smaller knife, the paring knife is better. Do, 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 do. There is a big, huge seed. So you gotta avoid the seeds. We've never done it before. Now, there are many ways people cut mangoes. Many ways people cut the, the half sections. This part usually doesn't get cut. It usually gets peeled and then it's the chef's eating section. At least that's often what I do with it. Because it's just very troublesome, very difficult to actually uh, cut the mango meat off of the huge seed in here. So you can see there's that, goes that deep. But if I try it here, see still, it doesn't get through. That's, the seed is really long. There I got through, if you listen closely, you can hear the fibrous. See, look, right here, even right here, I cannot cut through, because there is a seed in the way. So there you go, so that, there's the edge of the seed, right there. Right there, you can kind of see it. So why is this the chef's part? Because, well, once you've peeled it, you have these two halves and you got a nice little middle part you can eat. Mm. Mm. And it tells you it's very sweet. And it's good to use. A little bit tart. And that strawberry leaf just, there it goes. Leave my finger. This is the chef's part of the mango. Ah, oh, very sweet. So you can kind of see how big the seed is. I can't get any more out of that. Can't get any more. Now I can eat the rest, but I'm not gonna waste your time by eating the rest. We're gonna process the mango and get it ready. Then we'll process the lychee. Then we'll they'll be ready to shave some ice. And you also notice that I'm kind of taking my time here, giving you guys a chance. So what I'm doing for the mango, one of the ways you may have learned, if you've ever done mango before, maybe not, I like how you might do an avocado. Make just slices down, do not cut through. Now if I was making slices just to eat, I would cut right through, and that would be your slice you can eat. But since there's gonna be chunks alongside the strawberries, alongside the blueberries, the condensed milk, the red bean paste, the lychee. And if you had fresh lychee, that would be even better, but it's very hard to find good fresh lychee in the States. Very hard. And if you've ever had fresh lychee in Asia, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's just so much better, especially in the southern, southern part of Asia. Oh, so, I, so you cut through, you cut through straight, cut through on that side, and you can fold it out. So that's one way you can cut a mango up. Now you see you have a whole bunch of little corners that you can put on your... on your uh, shaved ice. If you want to use your hands, you use your hands. I'm just using a knife because I want to use a knife. So now we have lots of mango. And if you think the mango is too big, chunks are too big, you can even cut them in half again. If you like. Same size as the strawberries, about. About the same size as the blueberries. Mm. See, so, you now the benefit of making shaved ice at home. I can make this very decadent concoction where I have 
multiple, multiple, multiple flavors. When you get shaved ice at a place, most of the time, they might give you one or two flavors, which includes the red bean and includes like the leeches, like any of these, just one or two flavors. I'm not sure if you want watermelon yet or not. And that's all they'll give you. So you're making it at home, you can add whatever flavors you like, add multiple flavors, add lots of flavors. And make it a very tasty, fruity, salad -y treat. So yeah, so we get the mango ready. And I don't really have to cut it with my knife here. I could just peel, peel it off. Mango cutting. All right. And there's any left over. Again, chef's privilege. So let's do, I'll put these in. Chef's privilege. This is why, as the chef of the house, you know, I get to, uh, I eat less at the table because I have already eaten. I've already tasted everything. So I know it tastes, and I know it tastes good for the day too. Ah, right, here we go, let's do this one. So let me show you, if I was doing this at the table, just wanted people to eat it, that's what I would do. Slice it right off, boom, boom. Slice it right off and let them eat it this way and eat around the peel, easy to do. But since I'm making the shaved ice, I want to have chunks. It's easier to not cut through the peel and to fan it out and cut it this way. Cut it off the peel this way. Well, I'll do it the other way. I'm going to do it the other way. I still have to cut those others too. But you can kind of see that it's easier once you fan it out. You just cut it off. Okay. All right, let me chop up some of those ones a little smaller too. Little big mango chunks. There we go. And you can leave your chunks as big as you like. I just want to have them small, small like the blueberries. You can also add cherries, whatever fruit is in season that you like. So many good summer fruits to add. There you go. So I'm doing just cutting around first, cutting off the peel first. And then we'll chop it again. Be careful with that knife. That knife is very sharp. And cut the peel off. Boom, boom. And there I have one mango. A mango's worth of mango. We got just as much as what five strawberries was that? Five strawberries, one mango, boom. Cup of blueberries, boom. Um, shall we use some watermelon? Sure, why not? So this is pre-cut. Why? Because we actually had it earlier. So this won't take long to cut this up. Add some watermelon to our shaved ice. I do have some cherries, but I'm not gonna add those. The cherries, you know, you're gonna have to pit each one of them. It's gonna take a little more work. Let's see, two, let's go three more. Three more slices of watermelon. Just kinda see I'm getting like the amounts equal. Just cause that's what I wanna do. All right, let's see, I think I can get one more slice on this one, one more slice on this one. 
There we go. Kind of keep them all the same size. Yes, boom. If you don't want watermelon, don't have watermelon. If you don't like watermelon, you don't need it. Okay, but this is a very sweet one. So there we go. Some slices of watermelon, some strawberries, some blueberries. I'm gonna put the watermelon back. Good thing I forget the lemonade. Oh, so much flavor in that lemonade, yes. Keep myself cool, eating the lemonade. Moving things around. Option. Oh, we also have peaches. White peaches. We love white peaches. We're not doing white peaches today. I almost feel like I should add some white peaches, but. So let's see. This specific lychee, whole seedless lychee. Sometimes they come in syrup. I think this one's coming in water. We'll see. Or maybe, no, that is definitely syrup. Pretty sure that is syrup. And again, you know, you can do the whole lychee. If you've never seen a lychee before, this is what it looks like when it's peeled and seeded. Uh, you can see kind of this big red ball. That's what it looks like before it's been peeled and seeded. It's like a cherry. It needs to be seeded. So we're going to take out some lychee. How many? Let's see. Let's see. There's six. And looking at volume wise, a couple more. Eight. Eight looks like it'll be about the right amount. And we can chop these up. Oh, trust me. The rest of the leech, there's still some leech in there. I probably took out about half, I'm going to guess. There's still leech in there. Yes, there is. It will not go to waste. Trust me. Off camera. Other people will be partaking in this decadent shaved ice. And if you've never had the Asian style shaved ice, it's absolutely worth a try. And you know, you might feel you have to go with an open mind though. A lot of Americans aren't really familiar or let's see, the red bean paste. It's not something that Americans tend to like, from my experience. But one thing I will say about the red bean paste. Now, lychee, you guys tend to like lychee. It's a good sweet fruit. Something that you haven't had. It's like mango. It's kind of like one of those exotic fruits you haven't had much of. And unfortunately, it's not as sweet in the States as it is when you're in Asia. But it's a good approximation. Let's see how this one is. Just have a taste. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mmm. Very sweet. If you ever had one of those carton drinks of lychee from an Asian store, that's exactly what that tastes like. Uh, but I was talking about the red bean paste. Think about the red bean paste. Most Americans aren't used to a sweet bean. Um, let me describe, but you know, if you keep an open mind and think about your Pop-Tart. You know, like the chocolate Pop-Tart. The ones that are more like a paste inside. Or think about like, what if you took, oh, I know a good comparison. Peanuts. You know how there's the payday or peanut butter? Oh, perfect one. Peanut butter, the Reese's peanut butter cups. That's the kind of consistency you're gonna get with red beans, unless it's the actual. So this one, unfortunately, this wasn't what I was actually looking for, but it's mostly a paste. It's a little chunky, so it's kind of like a chunky peanut butter. But it is a paste. Not what I was, um, I love just that red beans. That's just a paste. And then you got your condensed milk. Now I find a great little bag of condensed milk. Sweetened condensed milk, that's good. So now that we've got our ingredients ready to go, because you want to have them go and ready before you actually shave your ice, because your ice is going to sit there and melt if your ingredients aren't ready to go. 
So let's take out our shaved ice maker. No. Mm, I forgot to look it up. I think when I first bought this shaved ice maker I'm about to show you, I think it was close to like 60, 70, 80 dollars, somewhere in there. Can't remember. I was gonna look at my video and see if I had the price listed. But I forgot to. I was gonna take a little bit. Okay, that's an empty box so that I can ignore that. Get it out. And absolutely, there should be a link. Huh. You know, I don't think there is a link in the description yet. But here it is. The F2C Ice Crusher. Now, we have tried many different ice machines out there. Many different versions. Some of them require you to use their very special containers of ice. Well, containers that you freeze with ice. Like around circular containers, you have to use that container, only that container. Oof. Cumbersome, annoying. So we're gonna rinse this out. We're not even gonna use this actually. But it comes with a tray where you can let the shaved ice fall. But I will tell you, it's not gonna fall where you want it to. The, the tray is it's gonna fall over here. So we're gonna get rid of the tray. Don't need the tray. Now I'm gonna move it around the other way so that I can actually plug it in. Get the ingredients over here. So I'll do one, the first one, which is excuse me, standard syrup. Now if you want your ice not to melt very much, you can keep your syrups in the refrigerator and that would help that out. I did not. Uh, there, this one. Boom. Okay. Now it's plugged in, ready to go. You can see it didn't turn on. Still off. Doesn't turn on. Okay. Put that over here too. And we're gonna move this. It's around a little perfect. And we're gonna get out our shaved ice bowls. Now these are just bowls that we got that are kind of big. These are the shaved ice bowls. So we're gonna do three bowls. Well, we'll do two bowls of shaved ice. One syrupy and one Asian style. Ooh, the Asian style is what I'm looking forward to. Let me see. I need ice. That's what I was coming over here for. You also need some ice to work the ice machine. great thing about the ice that we have is just that tap, not the tap, ice. This is the ice from that spigot. We just put in water, put in some ice trays, and we take the ice trays and dump them out. Did I turn it on yet? No, I did not. Good. Didn't turn it on yet. Okay. Put it out. <clears throat> now we're ready to dump in the ice. Once I filled in my bowl, I'll move the ice out of the way a bit. Boom. Oh, it's already water dripping down because it's melty. Huh. Wow, it's melting fast. All right, so we're going to turn it on. It's not going to go on yet until I get the ice crusher past the cylinder. So I need to take a couple cubes out. It won't turn on until it's past the cylinder. It's a safety feature. And off we go, and this is gonna be really loud. Still some ice left in there, but I wanted to bring the shaved ice close to you. I want you to see the puffy, billowy, cloud-like shaved ice. Come on. It's white, so it's hard to focus. Okay, there it goes. 
So there it is, the beautiful shaved ice. So now you can put in whatever topping you want in it. Again, we're gonna go start with the, I'm gonna put the rest of the ice in the freezer for a second. Because you wanna keep your ice cold. Notice it's not gonna turn on because the lever is not down. We're gonna take this ice out. Put the other bowl in the freezer. Now if you want things to stay cold or longer, that's what you would do. Um, let me see. Okay. So let's see, I was gonna go for some strawberry, some banana, stuck. There it is. There it goes. There we go. Strawberry, banana, and cherry flavor. So just pour it right on. If this is in the refrigerator, now you're going to see when I pour it on, it's going to melt the ice. That is going to be a definite side effect, always. Unless you have this in your refrigerator. Some banana, more melting. And lastly, some cherry. Those are good flavors. So yeah, so definitely, if you check out my video, I have a review on this F2C shaved ice machine. I like it you can use any ice you want. Comes out nice and pillowy. You put any uh, shaved ice, and now I've got to take that picture. And this time, since it's very colorful, I'll use the white background. So you can see it. Oh, actually, I was going to show it to you directly, right? There we go. Look at that. You can put as much or as little syrup as you want on it homemade shaved ice to your desire. Right. Since this one's colorful, I can go ahead and picture it. We'll go this way on a white background. Beautiful. We got this shaved ice, so of course. Now the one thing about cleanup on this thing, <laughs> there is no cleanup. All you need to do, I'm serious, you do not want to do anything but let the water melt and wipe it up with the towel. That's your cleanup. That is the only cleanup you're gonna do with this ice machine. This shaved ice machine, oh, it's really worth it. If you love shaved ice, you can make all the shaved ice to your heart's content. We love the machine just from your straight shaved ice. So let's see. Some banana, some strawberry, some cherry, all together. Mmm. Oh, that, that's very soft. That ice is very soft, very pillowy. Of course it melts because it's frozen ice. But you're not gonna have to crunch, crunch, crunch. It's not like the snow cones you get from the freezer where you just crunch, crunch, crunch. Uh -uh. This is soft, billowy, just like you get at any place, any state fair or Hawaii, any place that sells your shaved ice. Just as good. Mm. So there's one. All right, now for the other style, the Asian style.
Now you see, I actually filled up the bowl with ice, but it's gonna be too much ice, actually. It's not gonna need that much ice. I'll be truthful. Okay, let's see. Let's get that piece in there, that piece in there. Mm, all right, we'll put them all in. Because I am going to be making shaved ice later, too. I know it's already dripping. Don't worry about that. I didn't turn it off yet. It automatically turns off when you open it up. Here comes the noise again. It is noisy, but it is well worth the noise. And I did say, like, you know, I lost, saw before it was like $70, $80, I think, when I bought it. When I first worked at it, I looked at it recently. It's like $35 for one of these things. Well worth the price. $35? Yes. Please. Okay, one thing you want to notice is I am spinning my bowl as I'm shaving the ice so that it goes into all different parts of the bowl. That's important, otherwise it'll be taken up in one spot. You don't want that. Still a little ice in there, it's good. You know, if you, uh, hard to, let me go. Okay. All right, there we go. Yeah, a little hard to get it all in. But there it is, nice and billowy and soft. Like a pillow. Can let me show you the ice before. We shaveify it. Yeah, I just like focus on the white. That's why. Okay, let's focus on the red. It'll focus on the red. Yes. Yes, camera. No. No camera. A little farther out. A little farther out. Come on. Oh. All right. Well, let's just. All right. So now the order here doesn't really matter that much. Some people like to do the. Oh, I got to cut. No, I don't have to cut. Easy pourable spout. Uh, so some of you would like to do it in a certain order. There is no real order. Ooh. Okay, let me show you the red bean paste since I got some of my fingers already. So I think about the chocolate you would get in a Pop-Tart. It's kind of consistency it's going to be. And it's very sweet. It's a bean. Don't be afraid of the sweet bean. Mmm. It's very tasty. I'm gonna put some red bean on here. Red bean paste. It's been in the refrigerator, so that keeps it cold, so it makes it easier. I'm gonna get a new spoon to kind of spread it out. Yeah, you don't really need to spread it out. I just want to. Spread out a little. Some red bean paste, very sweet. Think of like when you have peanut butter and it's very sweet, like you had a Reese's peanut butter cup. Except this is a little more, it's not as, um, hmm. I'm trying to think how it's not as, um, that peanut butter, it's very soft. It's not that soft. A little more, it's more of the consistency of the filling to a chocolate Pop-Tart. If you ever had a chocolate pop tart? I think that's the best way I can describe the consistency of it. All right, then I'm gonna go, and I think I'm gonna go next to my condensed milk. Some condensed milk. Oh yes, good, good, good. And you can put a little or a lot of condensed milk. This kind of bag is really nice. Oh, you can see how thick condensed milk is. Partly because this has been in the refrigerator, and that makes it a little more thick. But a nice layer of condensed milk. It's almost like you're making ice cream, actually. Since the condensed milk is a very milky thing to do to your ice. 
All right, there's a good amount of condensed milk. That'll do. You can have little or you can have less than that if you like. Now let's do some fruit. Let's see. All right, so I was using this one. So we're going to add some strawberries. Little strawberry corner. Where should I mix them all up? A little everywhere. Let's go a little everywhere. Yeah, little strawberries. Some mangoes. That was actually a lot of mangoes. Some watermelon. And if you ever go to a, a shaved ice shop, they are often piled high. Actually, the bowls are bigger too, I'll admit. But they're piled high with toppings depending but again you can but usually it's only like one topping or two toppings lychee some lychee the white lychee i'm gonna finish it off with some blueberries right in the middle of the top Maybe a few more blueberries. And there it is. Using this F2C, oh, I should turn it off. Just to make sure, yep, turned off. Okay, using the F2C, link will be in the description. Shaved ice machine. Let me give you a big close up, one last close up. of this shaved ice creation. Oh, there you go. Look at all those colors, all those flavors, the sweetness. It is one big, refreshing, icy treat. And again, your toppings can be whatever you like, all you need, and you can see, this one is still in the running, it hasn't like completely melted yet. It's still good. So one last picture. Again, set it up perfect. There's the picture. Right there. One last picture, then we'll take a taste. I can describe it for you. Here we go. Put them together. One of those will become the thumbnail. Not sure which one yet. One of those three, I might even mix them all together. I do that a lot. But there you go, the inner workings of the channel. So there we have a wonderful, decadent shaved ice. So let's Dig in. Ooh, so many flavors. Mm. Oh. The fruit is very sweet. All oh, that fruit, the strawberry, the blueberry, the mango, the watermelon. Mm. The lychee, the condensed milk adds a wonderful milkiness, satisfying creamy flavor. I'll go red bean side in a second. Mm. At the red bean side. And the fruit. Oh. Mm. Mm. Wow. Oh, wow. The red bean. Mm. Adds such a nice sweetie. Adds a very nice sweet. 
um, and kind of thickened texture to your shaved ice. If you've never had the red bean paste before on a shaved ice concoction, definitely worth a try if you can find it. Find it in Asian stores in the Asian section of the store. It's called red bean paste, sweet red bean paste. Oh, it's so tasty. Mmm. Now this is a summer treat that I could eat all the time. Refreshing, cold, sweet, and the flavors of all that fruit. Mm. Wow. So let me not keep you anymore. Um, if there are any questions, oh, somebody posted. Oh. Yes, in the third. It is very good. It is very good in the third. If you've never had Asian style shaved ice, I recommend you do it. it. But it's up to you what flavors you're gonna add to it. But fruit, if all you have is American fruit and condensed milk, you will not be disappointed in a shaved ice of this style. It, that's all you need, really. I mean, if you like the mangoes and you like the lychee and the other exotic fruit flavors, that's good too. But if all you have is condensed milk, because you can find that in any American store, condensed milk, any grocery store will have that. And then just add your favorite fruits on this bed of shaved ice, and you're in for a wonderful treat. It is just such an excellent addition to just having fruit. That's very sweet. All right, so that'll take care of our live for today. I'm gonna probably get to some more shaved ice making in a little bit so that we can have it as a family. But that'll take care of our shaved ice demo. I hope you do find the time to make a good, wonderful shaved ice, or if you have any other wonderful treats that you like for summer. You know, go ahead and make those treats as much as you like. And I thank you for stopping by, and I will see you in the next video or in the next live.